Welcome, Asian student, to our distance learning version of Intermediate Algebra for the Liberal Arts. Your one semester mission, should you decide to accept it, is to familiarize yourself with some practical, real life applications of Intermediate Algebra in order to prepare yourself for your college level math class next semester. The self-paced nature of this course is supposed to allow you to move quickly through the material that you find easier and slower through the material that you find challenging, but its mastery-based emphasis will require you to fully understand each section before you can continue to the next one. So please listen to this complete video before you decide to enroll or stay in this section of the course. And I want them right now. I'm sure you're going to want to know exactly how the course is run, and let's get right to that. Let's start off with how I'm going to come up with your grade. It's important to note that your next semester is going to be a college level math class, and we need to get you ready for that. So you might as well get used to it. Hmm. You don't get anything for homework. Your grade comes from your tests. And if you're one of those people that's not good at Taking tests, well, you better get good at taking tests, and we're going to help you do that in this course. But you don't get anything from the homework other than the privilege to take the tests. You're not even going to be allowed to take the tests until you've done all of your homework in each section. And there are five tests. Four of them are, if you would, regular chapter tests, and then we do have a final exam. I list it separately because it is a cumulative final exam. You can't take a test on something and then forget everything. You're going to need all this information for your next course. So we're going to test on everything in the final exam. And of course, all of that will add up to your 100%. Now, another thing. Now, uh, you, find secret you will again. need a graphing calculator and we will be supporting only the TI-83 version of the uh, graphing calculator, not the 84, not the 89. So you will need a TI-83+, plus, TI-83 Barbie model, TI-83 anything, and we will be showing you how to use it. So don't worry about that, but you will need one, and you can use it on your tests, and you will not be able, for the most of the uh, part, to take the test or to, to uh, pass the test if you do not have that with you, in the same way with the homework. I know this is a lot to throw at you at one time, but I also need to tell you that all of this course will have to be run in a browser called Google Chrome. If you don't already have Google Chrome, you'll have to get Google Chrome. It's the only one that will allow everything to work. You'll need to go to www.google.com, the search engine, and type in Chrome Download and you'll see the screen the way it appears now. And if you download Chrome and run it, you'll see an icon similar to this or this. And it runs like any other browser and everything will work hunky-dunky. So remember, you will need Google Chrome to make everything work in this course. You will also need two Make no mistake, two separate notebooks. Not one broken up into two sections. Two separate notebooks. We have to teach you how to get organized here. One of them is just going to be for your notes, notes from the videos that you will watch, and the other one will be your homework. Now the notes, of course, are just labeled facts. I promise you I'm not going to give you anything that isn't a fact in the lectures. And that's where we want your notes, in the notes notebook. Homework, we may make mistakes, okay? So I want to keep them separate from the notes. Make sure that you number all the exercises in your homework notebook so that when you come up with a question, you can say, listen, I had a question on number 42 or whatever, okay? So I, but I, I am going to be expecting you to have two separate notebooks. Darn tootin'. And I don't want any of the notes in the homework or any of the homework in the notes. I expect them to be separate. So get them, you know, before we even start the course. 
you'll see later in this video that you will need them to, you know, at least certain your, your notes notebook to uh, even begin the course. Now, I can do that, but I don't want to. let's talk about these mastery base tests and that situation. First of all, your tests will be taken at the assessment centers on campus. Any of the three, Tacoma Park, Rockville, or Germantown. You can take it at any of the MC assessment centers. And you will find that you will not be able to take the test until you've done every bit, 100% of the homework that precedes each test. And that, that will drop the uh, flag, you'll see, and you'll then be able to take the test. Now, you may not proceed to the homework following a test until you've gotten at least an 80% level of mastery on a test, on a test that you take at the assessment center. If you do not get an 80%, what will happen is the software will create a correction assignment based on the problems that you got wrong on the test, and it will be a homework. And like any homework, you'll have to get 100% on it. That will give you the right to retake the test in its entirety. And, of course, you'll have to take that at the assessment center. And you can keep taking the test on, until you get an 80%. And you must keep taking a test until you get an 80%. Now, I'm happy to help you with the homework and help you with what you got wrong. But you must master this material to go on to your college-level class. Warning! Warning! Now, if you don't like this idea, do not take this course because no exceptions will be made to the mastery level, the required level of 80%. And you'll be glad of that, I promise you, next semester when you know what you're doing in your college level class. Now, this is an independent study class, so we're going to have to dig in. While you can go at your own pace, I will be putting in the announcements throughout the semester and emailing you target dates. And it's, it's important for you to understand what I mean by target dates. They are targets, okay, not deadlines, targets. Hey, this is great, man. Because distance learning is all about flexibility. But we do need to finish the course before the end of the semester. Whoa. So if you're a procrastinator and you don't want to do homework every night, I don't think you want to take this course. Yes, you're in deep do now. If you happen to miss a target date, the target dates are when you should take the tests by. It's only a target, okay? So please note, if you miss a target date for whatever reason, you can still take the test, okay? So why do we even have the target dates, you might ask? Well, that's to tell you that you're behind pace, okay? You're behind pace, and what are you going to do if you're behind pace? Cry? No. You're going to have to do more homework, work at a faster pace, to catch up. That's why we have the target dates. That's it, man. Okay? Game over, man. Now, Game over. at the end of the semester, if you haven't taken any or one, whatever test you haven't taken, you get a zero on that test. Okay. Once the semester over, it's over. So I say again. Warning! 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 If you're a procrastinator and you put things off, you don't want to take this course. Beware. Okay, you should be doing a little bit of homework every night, just like any college level course. Now, now what am I going to do? What if you actually fail a test? And when I say fail a test, uh -oh. that means you got less than an 80%. Let me say this again. That means you got less than an 80% because these are mastery based tests. <laughs> you will not be allowed to proceed until you get at least an 80%. <laughs> So as I said, a, ter a test correction homework assignment will automatically be created and you should dig right back in on that. Oh, no, you don't. Okay, now this is a homework assignment, so you have to get a hundred on it, and then you'll email me and tell me that you're ready to retake the test. Oh dear, that's too wonderful to be true. Yes, you can take the test as many times as you want, and you can do each homework exercise, you'll find out in a minute, as many times as you want until you get it right. So there's no reason for you not to get 100% on homework because you're going to get an infinite number of attempts. Whoa! Additionally, after you've done the correction assignment, there's a way, and I'll show you, to uh, go back on your test and review what you got wrong. Uh, it's via the results button. 
and I would ask you to additionally you know go back and look at your test and if, if you got something wrong you don't know why by all means let me know and we'll find out before we make another attempt at that test Thank you, sir. May I have okay? so as soon as you think you're ready for a retake if you had failed a test email me and I will set you up and and let the assessment center know that you uh, get another attempt but you have to do that before going to the assessment center don't email me from the assessment center because I probably won't get your email in time and you'll be waiting there got it there's something I have to ask you now I bet you want to know of course how in, how are we gonna do the help required homework uh, you know before I take each test and how is the material going to be presented and lectured in the first place and that's the coolest part about this class okay all that is going to be done using a software that many of you may be familiar with but if you're not I'm going to show you called math excel now every homework problem looks pretty much like this screen here there's a problem right here It's probably not as easy as this one and then you type in the answer right here now if it's something you can't type on a normal keyboard it'll be over here on the templates or the buttons we'll call them okay and probably the coolest thing is the various helps that you can get if you're having trouble doing this homework one is it's called the help me solve this and it will guide you through doing this problem Okay, but eventually you're going to have to do a problem on your own, so you won't get credit if you use the Help Me Solve This. There's View an Example that shows you a problem just like this one, and then you come back and do this one. Or, if you want, you can jump to the pages of the textbook with this button that cover how to do the problem. Or, you can look at a video from the book or an animation from the book that shows you how to do the problem, much like what I created before or probably the most important one of all cool. is the ask my instructor button the ask my instructor button will send a copy of this question to my email and I would ask you to, to don't just send it and go huh, at least write something that says you know I, I, I got the first part of this problem but I'm having trouble with this part and tell me what problem you're having and I'll get back to you you know at least within 24 hours usually faster than that but always if you send me a question you better be checking your email because I'm going to be returning an answer okay now you're going to be working through the homeworks probably in order but you can click you know go back and forth between the numbers using these numbers here and I hope you can see for instance a number eight here we got that one right crystal clear with the green check that it was correct and number nine we got that one wrong of course you have to get all of them right all of them right before you can go on now what if you get one wrong well first of all you'll find out what you did wrong and then you can use the similar exercise button it's gonna give you a problem just like this one uh, with different numbers okay and you can do as many you can use the similar exercise as many times as it takes but you will have to learn this so use that similar exercise button oh, dear. That's too wonderful to be and use the ask my instructor button or anything else you need help with now we're gonna have to get you into math excel in the first place you're gonna go to www.mathexcel.com and you'll see something like this and you'll have to register so you'll click on student and go through the process of registering I will send you our course code which they will ask you for our course code that gets you into my gradebook automatically and you know go through this process now once once you've registered you'll have a login name and password and the next time you'll come in you'll sign in with that login name and password and begin when you sign in it will look like this okay you'll see math 97 and my name etc now in the middle of the screen you'll get announcements they may change every so often one some of them will be the target dates that I've spoken of before 
you'll also see your progress, how you're moving along in the course. But probably the button that you'll hit the most often is going to be Homework and Test, the Homework and Test button. Every time you come in to do work, you'll click on that and you know go to your homework and tests. When you click the homework and test button you'll see a screen that looks something like this. Notice the, they're right in line, they're right in order that, that you should do them. They are the homework and the tests, just like it says. The first thing you'll do is the orientation. Now notice these green flags. Much like a NASCAR race, you can't begin an assignment until the green flag has been dropped. You'll notice that you cannot do the first homework uh, video, if you would, graphing linear functions, the video, because the green flag has not been dropped. And it won't be dropped until you complete the math Excel orientation. As you complete an assignment, each flag will be dropped in the order that you can do them. Notice that, for the most part, the assignments are going to come in pairs. They're going to be a video presentation that I expect you to watch and take notes. If you don't do that, it's as if you skipped class in a distance learning class. So there's a video, and each video, for the most part, is followed by a homework assignment. Now, there are some extra videos that I expect you to watch, but for the most part, as I said, each video is followed by a homework assignment. Now, Sometimes I have some optional videos for some people I don't know what you don't know and for instance interval notation some people know it some people don't if you feel you need that then you can watch that special video well, isn't that special? but it's not required okay and you'll work your way through the flags going video homework video homework etc until we get the to the test and that test, of course, you will take online, but you'll take it at the assessment center that you've chosen. And as I said before, if you don't pass the test and get at least an 80% on it, the software will create I'm back, baby! a correction assignment. And after you do the correction assignment, you'll email me and then go back and take the test again until you pass it. Hopefully you get the idea of the sequence here. Now, let's look at what if we actually could get to a video and we clicked on it. Okay? When we click on it, you'll see something like this. Each video will actually have a video question. And what when you click on the question, something like this will appear. There are a couple things that make this course very different, and I think it's worthy of mentioning them here. Now, we try to simulate and give you exactly the same experience that you would get in an on-campus course, especially in the, on, in the video lectures. To that end, I need you to know that I'm going to require you, like I would in an on-campus course, to view the lectures. In fact, the system is going to require you to do that. Uh, it's almost as if you're not going to be able to escape it. Uh, at the end of each lecture, there will be a code, a cryptic bunch of letters and numbers that you will need to know in order to get the privilege to move on to do the homework. You'll see how that system works when you go to try to do it. But you will need to know that code, and that to get that code, it'll be at the very end of each of the lectures. So you'll have to pay attention during the lecture and you'll have to watch the whole lecture. There will be, I think you'll find, no skipping of the, of the video and no fast forwarding or anything like that. It's just I've edited the uh, player so that it won't do that. I'm gonna try to force you to succeed is the idea. Now, I expect you, as I would in an on-campus course, to take notes. At very least, you'll need to copy the advanced code or you won't be able to go on in the course. But I strongly suggest that you take notes because in the next course, your college level course, you will have to take notes and you might as well get used to it. And my bet is that you'll be referencing those notes in the homework and throughout the course as you get into the next chapter. Because remember, the point of taking this course is not to get through it. 
The point is to internalize the material which you will need. It is prerequisite for your next college level course. Now, if you have trouble taking notes and you don't know what to write, I suggest to you write everything. But you're definitely going to write enough to get the general idea. Did you know that the space bar for videos is kind of the international pause button and it toggles pausing on and off so you can you know use the space bar it's the biggest button on the keyboard so it should be easy if you need a break and you need it to stop so that you can write something down go ahead and hit the space bar and then to restart it you hit the space bar again now another thing I want to emphasize is the difference between what we're covering here intermediate algebra and the beginning algebra that you may or may not have had prior to this uh, in my opinion anyway and you're stuck with my opinion the difference between beginning and intermediate algebra is that in intermediate algebra we're not just giving you tools they're not just more difficult tools to use we're actually going to require you to apply those tools the lecture will cover the general concepts uh, and some examples, but for the most part, you're going to have to go to the homework and apply those concepts to real world situations. That's the difference. In beginning algebra, basically we asked you to just regurgitate problems that we did uh, in the lecture. Now you're going to have to think a little bit. And you're going to have to actually apply those concepts, because what good is it if you can't apply them in the future, to hopefully you'll see some very real world, that's what our, we're trying to do, uh, homework problems. So that's that's kind of the difference between this class and, uh, and maybe an on-campus class, but it's not very much difference, is it? Hopefully you'll get the same feel and you'll be as or more successful in your next class course which is a college level course. Now once we've watched the video and answered the question correctly we'll be able to come in again to homework and tests and that flag oh, yeah. will be dropped you see and then you can move on to the homework for that section. When we click on the homework for the section we get a list of homework problems. We probably should do them in order, but you can do them in any order. If you click on one individual question, you will be sent back to a screen that you know. Now, let me remind you, you have to get 100%, 100% on this homework assignment. You have to get everyone right, okay, with my help or with the Ask My Instructor or the similar exercise or whatever it takes to move on. If we click on a question, we'll be back to this screen that we've seen before. I hope it's obvious that you'll be taking notes in your note notebook and doing these homework exercises, numbering them, mind you, in your homework notebook. Keep them separate. And as we work through all the assignments for a test, if you would, eventually all the flags will go away, won't they? And it'll be time to take the test at the assessment center. Make it so. And that's what you'll do. Now, if you need any help, let me remind you yet again Perhaps I could be of some assistance. that you can email me directly, bill.witty at montgomerycollege.edu, or you can use the Ask My Instructor button and it will send me a copy of that uh, specific problem. Now, I do ask you, I know that, dude. make sure you sign your name. Many of you have email addresses like the Golden Bear or uh, whatever, Sweetie122. I, I don't know who you are, so make sure that you get in the habit of signing your name. I also ask you, this may seem weird, Next. don't send me thank you emails. I answer between 60 and 100 emails every day. I, I, it's just going to slow me down. I appreciate you being courteous, but you can help me out by not sending me thank you emails. It just prolongs the situation. Okay. I also expect you to ask a question in correct English, in full sentences. And if you don't do that, if you go, huh, or you use all lowercase like you're texting your, your friend, then you're going to hear from me. I'm not going to answer your question until you put it in correct English. 
So get used to writing in correct English. Texting is fine for your friends, but not for teachers and employers. If you need to, you can call my home at this number, but you better call before 8.30. I get up very early in the morning to answer these emails, so I go to bed at 8.30. After 8.30, my wife will answer the phone, and I don't think you want to talk to her, I promise you. So, but don't be afraid to call me, but as I said, call me before 8.30 p.m. So I think you know what to do, so... What's all this jabberwopping when there's work to be done? Let's get digging in. Go sign into Math Excel. Uh, and begin watching your videos in your notes notebook and doing your homework in your homework notebook. Good luck.